the reaction of metal with acid first i will write the reaction this is your metal next is your diluted mineral acid and in this diluted mineral acid we will take two things your h2so4 or we can take hcl we will not take hno3 this is not your diluted mineral acid only these two are and this will prepare what this will prepare your salt and plus your h2 gas okay so this is the reaction of metals with so this is the reaction of metal with acid first we will take what we will take metals diluted mineral acid in that we will take h2so4 or hcl and after that it will prepare your salt and your hydrogen gas will evolve now let me write some in uh, some reaction uh, let's take metal first zinc zinc and we are uh, putting the zinc in uh, let's take h2so4 which is a diluted acid okay so it will form what it will form your salt so zno4 is what is your salt and your hydrogen gas will evolve next let's take any metal let's take magnesium here also i'm taking same um, this uh, mineral acid which is diluted and this will prepare your mgso4 and your hydrogen right if let's say i'm taking aluminium plus h2so4 and diluted now you tell me the reaction of this aluminium plus h2so4 diluted safi are you there uh, so tell me I'm good. I'm hydrogen gas. what uh, so tell me the name al like a, uh, it will be uh, al2 so4 Three, yeah, and your hydrogen gas. Yes. Now, if we will take these uh, metals with HCl, okay? Let's say aluminium plus HCl. It will be what? AlCl3 plus your H2. And if I'm taking Z when with your hydrochloric acid, it will be ZnCl2 plus H2. And if I'm taking magnesium with HCl, it will be MgCl2 with H2. And these are what? These are exothermic. These are what? These are exothermic. Now, what is the meaning of exothermic? Exothermic means exothermic means heat giving. Okay, heat giving. So this is your reaction with this H2, H2 here also H2, and here with hydrochloric acid. We will never take HNO3 as diluted mineral acid. Now, just a minute. So now you tell me the reactivity CT. Reactivity CT. That day I told you not to learn all the reactivity. Huh. Yes. Um, potassium, sodium, mm. uh, don't like that. NaCl like that. Yes, what? Uh, say like KNA, CMG, that. Okay. KNA, uh, then? CA, uh, then MG, uh, AL, uh, ZN, after ZN, uh, PB. No, after ZN, it's iron. Yeah. After, no. after iron, it's PB, and then is your h and after h is uh, cu uh, mercury and c and gold u and platinum okay so here is your this is what this is your hydrogen so metals above h these are what these are the metals above h in this uh reactivity series so this liberates your h2 gas when they react with your dilute mineral acid okay these are the metals which liberate what your h2 gas when they will react with your dilute mineral acid like here your al zn and mg see your al zn and mg these are what these are the metals which are above hydrogen so they are liberating what they are liberating your h2 gas when they are combining with the any any dilute mineral acid okay got it if let's say i'm writing this reaction copper plus dilute hcl will give me cucl2 plus h2 is this reaction correct or not hmm? this reaction is correct or wrong well, that's wrong because yes this reaction is wrong and even i'm and if and if i write this platinum plus your dilute uh, let's take h2so4 it will be ptso4 and your h2 gas will evolve this reaction is also incorrect why because these are the metals which are coming below your hydrogen only the metals above your hydrogen will emit hydrogen gas when it will combine with your any uh, dilute mineral acid only the h2s4 and hcl will not take it okay got it any doubt
Any doubt? No, I got any doubt. Okay, so let's move forward here. Just a minute. So let okay, let me write. Let me ask you some uh, chemical reaction. Okay. Question. Let's take magnesium as a metal, and I'm taking here your hydrochloric acid as the dilute. It will give me what your iron with HCl diluted acid. It will give me what your copper with HCl dilute acid. It will give me what your Na with HCl diluted will give me what. Now you solve this and tell me. This part you have to understand that above hydrogen. Your each and every metal will evolve H2 gas, and below hydrogen, uh, this is wrong because below hydrogen, your H2 gas is not liberating. Okay. Okay. So now you tell me this. I'll give you two minutes. Done. Okay. So tell me now if I'm combining magnesium with hydrochloric dilute hydrochloric acid, so it will form what? You get MgCl plus H2. MgCl. MgCl2. Okay. Uh, next with iron. You get FeCl3 plus H2. FeCl3? Why yeah. FeCl3? It will be FeCl2 plus hydrogen. And with your copper? Hmm? It won't react. Yes, very good. And with Na? NaCl plus H2. See, this is the reaction. We will never perform this reaction in lab. In lab, we never perform this sodium with your dilute hcl why because this is very very exothermic very exothermic so what is the meaning of exothermic that large amount of heat really, will what yeah, it releases heat yeah very large amount that's why we never perform this reaction and one more reaction we will not perform that is your k okay potassium also we will not perform and na also we will not perform because these two metals are coming in the very first and second uh, uh, row or column in your this reactivity series. Okay, so this two reaction we will never perform, and this we all know that below hydrogen it will not liberate, and these are the two correct ones. Now, if I'm writing a reaction like metal plus pure diluted HNO3 will give me heat. Sorry, will give me hydrogen. So this is a wrong reaction. This is what? This is a wrong reaction. Okay. Only these two reactions are correct with your H2 as a 4 and with your HCl. This <clears throat> HNO3 is not correct. Now, next. Why diluted HNO3 does not evolve H2 gas with metal? Do you know why? No. Okay. Why your diluted HNO3 doesn't evolve your hydrogen gas with metal? which is above your hydrogen in series just a so here <clears throat> this uh, why diluted hno3 doesn't evolve h2 gas with metal above h in series because this your hno3 is a very strong oxidizing agent is a very strong oxidizing agent and what is the meaning of oxidizing agent which supplies your which supplies oxygen oh. yes so if i'm writing this um reaction zn plus dilute hno3 it will form what it will form water why because any hydrogen evolved is oxidized to water you know so that's why we will never perform or and in this what what are the product will we get what what will be the other product what what like when this reaction takes place what will we what will be the other product? Okay, your voice is not clear. Can you please message me in the chat box? Okay, so here your HNO3 is what is very oxidizing agent which supplies O2. That's why in reacting other product in the sense. Hmm. Achha, the other product of this part. Okay. Okay, so other product of this part. Okay, so here your uh, zinc plus dilute HNO3 will form water. Water, you understood now why? Because any hydrogen evolved is oxidized to water, and other will be your um, your Zn NO3 twice and your N2O. If we will balance this, then here we will get four Zn NO3 twice, and it will be your N2O. This is the other product of this reaction. Okay, so here see if I'm writing this HNO3, so in the in if it will react 
any metal with h and o p we will not form h2 here your h2 is not forming right your water will form but your h2 will not form now you understood safia got it yes ma'am these are the other products this one and this one now <clears throat> one more question that <coughs> can we obtain h2 gas with dilute h and o3 ever hmm? think and tell me can we obtain h2 gas with your diluted h and o3 ever can you uh, <coughs> do you know some metals with which uh, react with this h and o3 any metal no. no okay so we know no this h and o3 is what very strongly oxidizing agent only two metals are there only your mg and your mn mg is mg is what is mg magnesium and manganese these two only react with very very diluted acid only these two react with the diluted hno3 and here in this hno3 your acid is present in a very small amount in a very small percent and your water is present in a very large percentage let's say your acid may be 1% and your water 99% okay so only these two metals will react with your h and o3 okay so if you any doubt no ma'am okay next one so next is, is that hmm is that magnesium and magnesium what ma'am which metals are those mg and mn okay okay got it charge mg and mn your magnesium and your manganese magnesium if we will add no magne magnesium with your this hno3 we will get magnesium nitrate and your hydrogen gas okay okay if we will react your this magnesium let's say magnesium with your nitric acid i'm writing only na so we will get magnesium mg sorry your magnesium nitrate magnesium nitrate and you will get your hydrogen gas h2 gas so this and one more your mn these two only the metals which are reacting with your hydro uh, with your this um, your your what your nitric acid and forming your h2 gas now let's move let's go through with this note see here it's what it's reaction of what just a minute let me check your message why are these two metals reacting differently why these two metals react differently with your um, um uh, with your this hno3 hmm? see because your only your mg and mn no? your mg and mn are reacting with your um, nitric acid and forming your hydrogen hydrogen gas why because um, say they do form some water sometime water they do form but this mn and your mg metals are what are very strong reducing agent are very strong reducing agent are uh, reducing agents and they what do and they reduce your this h2 and themselves gets oxidized okay and here your hno3 is very um this is what this is a very strong oxidizing agent and these two metals are strong are very strong in this reducing agent so so, so they <clears throat> do what <coughs> they themselves get oh my <clears throat> so they are very strong reducing agent and hence they reduce this your hydrogen uh, this your water and they themselves gets oxidized that's why only these two metals react with your nitric and form your hydrogen gas understood safia got it safia are you there hello yes uh, a doubt okay so let's move further here here is what in this notes is here first is your reaction of metals with acid okay this is what reaction of metal hmm. so here is what huh. so first is reaction of metal with acid c it's written word except a few less reactive metals such as these these are what these are the metals which are below your h right so all metals react with dilute sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid you h2so4 and your hcl to produce your salt and hydrogen gas see same thing here i wrote they were metals plus dilute this it will give us salt and your hydrogen gas now if i'm reacting my metals with hno3 it will give me what ha huh. so hydrogen gas is not evolved when a metal reacts with nitric acid so this you already know no hydrogen gas will never evolve if it will react some metal 
with this HNO3. So this is due to why? Because this is your HNO3 is very strong oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the uh, HA produced to water and itself gets reduced. That's why we will, uh, when we will react with this, we will never form H2, but we will form H2O. Why? Because it's a very good oxidizing agent and it gets reduced. And here, see, it's written your mag magnesium and your manganese react with this to evolve your H2 gas. See, your metal, manganese, magnesium, this are evolving your hydrogen gas. Okay, now what is next? Reaction of metals with solution of other metals, uh, metal salt. Reactive metal, let's say copper, can displace a comparatively less reactive metal. This can, uh, this can uh, displace what? A less reactive metal. Let's say I'm writing here K, N, A, um, K, N, A, and then after that C, A, M, G. Okay, C, A, and M, G. So this is more reactive than this. So this can easily displace this, right? But this thing cannot displace this thing easily. But this can displace this very easily because potassium is more reactive than your magnesium. So here your copper is doing what? See, metal A plus salt solution of B will be a salt solution of A plus metal B. Copper, your silver nitrate will form your copper nitrate and silver. Why? Because now let's check Cu and A G. Hmm. Cu, where is your Cu? Yeah. And your A G C. Cu is more reactive than Ag, correct? Why? Because Cu is coming. Understood now why Cu is more reactive than Ag? Because Cu is there and after that you will get Ag. Cu is, Cu is in the first position and Ag is after that. Cu. So the more reactive metal will easily replace your less reactive metal. Got it? What is your next? This is what? This is your reactivity series of metals. So the reactivity series of metal is a list of metal arranged in the order of their decreasing activities. On the basis of this relative tendency to lose electron and their relative nature, metals are arranged in a series and this series is known as a reactivity series. So on the basis of, of this each metal to lose their electron, that's how they are sequenced. So the metals that are placed above hydrogen, these are the metals which are placed above hydrogen, are called the most reactive metals. Your K, your Na, your Ca, Mg, these are the most reactive metals. And the metals which are below your hydrogen, these are what? The less reactive. See here it's written, See, these metals are less reactive and these metals are more reactive than your hydrogen okay uh, got it now now uh, that day we talked about the properties the physical properties of metals that are shiny lustrous mm, uh, your ductile your malleable sonorous right so today we will learn about this non-hydrogen one those elements which form negative ions by gaining electron is known as non-electron sorry non-metal iodine sulfur these are what these are the non-metals except what your bromine which is what which is the liquid so these are the physical properties see malleability and ductile so these are non-metals are what neither malleable nor ductile means this cannot be beaten into sheets this is uh, for sheets and this can never be drawn into wires next is brittleness now what is brittleness that your non-metals are brittle in nature now what is the meaning of brittle tell me hmm yeah. Yeah. It means that it breaks easily. Hmm. Breaks easily. What is the physical state that most of the non-metals are soft, solid, but only the diamond, which is the very hardest substance, and diamond is what? Diamond is a non-metal. Luster. Spelling L U S T U R. You know, non-metals do not have luster. They do not have any shiny surface, but the metals have this shiny surface. Next, chemical properties of non-metals. Now, what is the chemical property of non-metal? Yeah, these are. This is the also point. Electrical and thermal conductivity. Non-metals are generally poor conductor of heat. That we all know. But only graphite is a good conductor of electricity. What about your melting and boiling point? Your non-metals will have a low melting point and a low boiling point. And your what about uh, your metals? Metals will have a very metals will have a high melting as well as a high boiling point so just opposite of metal is a non-metal so the this is what this is a chemical property of non-metal uh, which is non-metals do not react with water steam or dilute acid to evolve h2 gas 
your non metals will never react with your hydrogen sorry with your water with your steam or with your any kind of dilute acid your hcl or h2so4 to evolve this hydrogen gas why because the reason is that they act as an electron acceptor and cannot supply electrons to h plus ions of acid to reduce the hydrogen gas these are what these are themselves electron acceptor so if anybody uh, is a electron acceptor so obviously if i am accepting electron i cannot supply electrons to h plus right that's why if they will react with any kind of acid any kind of water or steam they will never evolve hydrogen gas let's take example of this s is what as is your sulfur with hso4 you are concentrated it is forming your so2 and water see here your h2 gas is not evolving because your this thing is itself a electron acceptor and it will never supply your electrons to h plus ions h plus sulfur with your hno3 see here we can um, react with hno3 but it will not form your uh, h2 see here it's not forming h2 na? and what is your hno2 it is an it is this vapor is which in color and your red is brown in color so non metals also show displacement reaction means uh, the thing will get displaced here is a chlorine and your sodium bromide so in the next one in the product one it will be your sodium chloride means this will combine with this and this is alone your bro mine is alone we are okay got it okay are getting it yes okay now the reaction between the metals and non metals so we will learn this in the next class we will learn about till here we will do today and in the next we will learn about the substance of metals okay so this this is what reaction between metals and non metals how metals and non metals react with each other so it's written word that your each element wants to have a completely filled valence cell that is it wants to have either two or eight electrons in the outermost cell you know two eight so two is a fill one it is a cell one so each and every element want their outermost shell to be filled with your two electrons or with your eight electrons okay in the outermost shell so metals have a tendency to lose electron obviously each and every metals is having a tendency to lose electron to form what to form a cations and non metals have a tendency to gain electron and form an ion so metals are having tendency to do what to lose electron to lose electron and form cations which is positive in charge and your non metals will have a tendency to gain electron to gain electron and become an ion which is negatively charged i'm not writing negatively i'll write only negative here okay so your metals have a tendency to lose to form your cation lose from cation your non metal have a tendency to gain and to form an ion gain and to form an ion now next is what when metals and non metal react with each other they both of them tries to achieve completely filled outermost shell because metals or non metals but they are what they are elements so so in the first line only we see that each and every elements wants to have like a completely filled valence shell so if we will talk about a metal or if we will talk about a non metal both will have their outermost shell to be filled correct so this type of chemical bond which is formed by the complete transfer of electron from one atom to another atom is known as your ionic bond it is known as your ionic bond so let's take one example if i am taking example of sodium and i am writing the electronic configuration so sodium is what 11 right so the electronic configuration of sodium will be 281 if it will be 12 so it will be 282 if it will be 3 so it will be 283 till 8 so here electronic configuration of sodium is 281 and in the order to complete its octet it needs eight electrons in its outermost shell so it is easier for sodium to lose one electron okay so here 281 let's say this is what this is sodium's electronic configuration right so sodium wants um, his outermost shell to be filled with eight so uh, how is this possible it will be easy for sodium to to lose one electron if it will lose one electron it will form to eight and here eight is there in its outermost shell so it will be easy for sodium to lose one electron right either gaining it will do what it will lose its electron why because to form because to fill its outermost shell that's why it is losing one electron so now from the m shell rather than accepting see 
losing one electron is more you know is better than gaining seven electron so the tendency to lose one electron have to completely fill valence shell similarly if you will see for chlorine which is 287 now you tell me that chlorine is 287 so for chlorine it is easy to gain one electron or to lose um, seven electrons come on safia tell me yes Hmm. Uh, this is for your chlorine, right? See, here is your chlorine. So for chlorine, it will be simple or easy to lose one electron. Uh, sorry, to uh, lose this gain. all seven electrons or it to gain. Ha. Huh, it will gain. Why? Because it only one electron it have to gain, and all seven electrons it have to transfer. So gaining is easy than your losing because only one thing only you have uh, chlorine have to gain. So chlorine, if we found that it is easier for chlorine to gain one electron, right? To what? To complete its O, sorry, to complete its eight in its outermost shell. Now you understood now. He what is that? Why each and every metal uh, have, matlab, wants to fill their outermost shell with a complete electronic configuration with eight, and how we will do that by losing and by gaining electron. What is next? If sodium and chlorine react with each other, then electron lost by sodium is gained by chlorine. Correct. If electron is lost by a sodium, so who will gain? It will gain by the chlorine. So Na plus and Cl minus are being oppositely charged, attracts each other. So this becomes what your NaCl. So this is a kind of ionic bond. Ionic bond means your combination of these two, your plus and your N minus. So N is plus and your chlorine is minus. So it will. So if we will combine these two, we'll get one salt, sodium chloride. Okay, got it. Next, what's the next? Any doubt? You can ask me. Properties of ionic compound. Now we will see the properties. Its physical nature is what they are hard crystalline solid because of their strong force of attraction between negative. What is your ionic? Ionic, your positive and your negative. So their physical nature is very hard. Hard because of your positive and your negative ions. Then what the what? What is the melting and boiling point? Melting and boiling point is also very high in this. Why? Because of this inter-ionic attraction of your plus and minus. What about solubility? These co uh, compounds are soluble in water and insoluble in organic solvents like kerosene, benzene. These things. These are what soluble in water. Now, what is the conduction? So, these are what the conduction of electricity through a solution involves a movement of charged particle, ionic electrovalent compound. So, these are the good conductors of electricity. Okay, got it. So, today we learned about what um, from here, I guess. Yeah, first reaction of metal with acids only with these two, dilute sulfuric and hydrochloric. Uh, next, we so this not a reactivity series because these are the more reactive metals than these ones. Next uh, is what your chemical properties of non-metals uh, react reaction with metal and non-metal. Uh, each and every element wants its outermost um, uh, outermost shell to be filled. So if two eight one or two eight two or two eight three, so it's better to lose three electrons than gaining uh, five or six electrons. So these are the properties of ionic compound. Okay, so that's it for today. In the next class, I'll start this. Your reference of metals. Okay, then thank you. Bye.